阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Today we're going to continue with the um, these on response retributions part thirteen, part fifteen. Sorry, um. 69, uh, verse, verse, verse 69. Last week we talked about 68, about greed, about uh, using the name of the you know the sages to justify your wrongful acts, uh, self righteousness, so to speak. So now we're going to talk about um, disorderly conduct in terms of you know excessive drinking uh, and. Quarrel and fight with one's own family member. So it's something that cause chaos into the um, um, into the society, into the uh, family. So first one is pretty straightforward. We have laws in the countries, right, that do not allow drinking or congregation in the pub after one p.m. in Australia, one a.m. because people usually have pub brawls and everything when they get too drunk in in the midnight. Um, there are cases where our um, one of our young people, one one of those young blokes, one guy, young guy, uh, uh, drank too much. I think it's in Sydney pubs, and uh, he was punched or punched other people. Either way, uh, one of them died. So this is another example of excessive drinking, uh, the injuries that it caused. Well, other than that, it also talks about,、um, you know, when people drink, they don't have any control over their their、um, their mental, you know, their actions. Some of them use that as an excuse to do whatever they want, and thus cause,、um, well, from the least serious, which is, you know. Cause displeasure, cause annoyance to other people, to you know this,、um, you know committing rape, committing、um, any sort of criminal activities, criminal act on other people, on people around them. So this quote talks about that, right? People who get too excessive in drinking. Lost their compass, lost their rationality, lost their, you know, restrain their own the whole of themselves and use this as an excuse to commit、um, unwholesome act, right? Most of them is most commonly is the sexual misconduct, right? Or in the other word, abuse, sexual abuse, or、uh, violence, right? Pub brawls that cause death, cause. Deep trauma on other people and oneself. This does not only restrain to alcohol; it can go to drugs as well, because those are all known as intoxicants, intoxicating us. Right, unable to think straight, unable to think properly, and thus doing something that we usually would not be doing or would not entertain to do it. In Buddhism, we have these heavy precepts against, you know, five matters. So the first four is, you know, the common one, where no killing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, no, um, no stealing. Those are actual action that is criminal by nature by itself. Drinking is the number five precepts. It's not. A criminal by itself, but it was used as a prevention to commit the first four precepts. You know, there was a very famous—I、um, don't know if it's a real case, but it, it's a very, very interesting story to tell how important the fifth one is to protect the first four. There is a neighborhood. A man in one of the household drank the alcohol. And he was drinking until he's very, very drunk, and he couldn't control his action, or rather, he allowed himself running amok, you know, and went to the neighboring house. The first thing he do is he saw chicken 
in the he was so drunk he saw the chicken of his neighbors so he picked it up kill it to cook it because you know what's better than roast chicken with the alcohol right so he committed killing karma so this this man when he was a he was conscious or he was not inebriated that means when he was sober he drank he has five precepts he took four precepts so to speak just an example right and then when he drank the alcohol first thing he did is kill the chicken so he commit killing karma second thing he did is he went and into the house of the neighbors and saw some shiny glitters and say hey i want this so he stole so he committed second trespassing in the buddhist precepts that means creating negative karma we're talking about karma here right number three people ask um what do i say the owner of the house is a lady and she talks to this um she asked the um this drunken neighbor this man have you seen my chicken it's gone he lied about it so he committed another lying karma last one of course actually mr gonda he saw this you know beautiful young lady living by herself and then he committed sexual misconduct with her because he's drunk and he's not fully in control so all four precepts you know that he earnestly held on to hold on to his line to protect his you know good record good reputation good karma has been ruined because he drank too much something that is not serious by itself there's not a crime by itself which is drinking because it's a it's a you know it's a fermented drink basically with alcohol so something that does not seem to be serious by itself but when you put it in the context of you know how it influences your conduct how it influences your judgment then it's a big problem because we have to exercise judgment in whatever we do yes we can let go sometimes and you know feel let free but we still have to come back and say what have i done so far you know etc etc so point is these four precepts are, na- um, are, are criminal in nature transgression in nature the alcohol precept is the most how to say they have so many exceptions in buddhism because it's not a criminal by itself it's not a crime by itself it's not a um, 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 um it's not going to generate negative karma by itself what is going to make it a negative thing is what you did after you drank and what it did to you when you drink it so it's very important so this refers to the alcohol that's the precepts wording it when you extend it to like medicinal marijuana or to even worse thing like heroin and all sorts of fancy names about the drugs right it might be fine when you watch the tv like you know those TV shows that shows about those drug lords and all that and you thought oh yeah it's so cool but in real life how many people was you know ruined life was ruined and um, how hard they had to fight to crawl back out of thousands of people out of 1000 people who uh, intoxicated with drugs um, took drugs how many people could get out less than less than 10 it's very hard fully get out you know so without going too far of that we just stay to the alcohol part uh buddhism has a lot of opening how to say a lot of exception to this um, precepts For example what the one that master jinko keeps mentioning is you or use the um alcohol as the catalyst for the medicine right or you know you use alcohol for medicinal purposes that's perfectly fine there's no restriction at all you can drink it any time or you use alcohol as sort of like a health product you know that helps your circulation of your blood it's not meant for consumption for entertainment or or just plain consumption as long as it's not meant for that it's meant for helping you you know circulate the blood especially elderly people they might have to drink alcohol master jingo has mentioned back in his time when he was still an apprentice next to mr lee he sat down across, he went to a mountain he, to a temple and we see the abbot the abbot sat down the abbot's like 80 years old sat down with a glass of wine it's like a monk drinking wine that's so weird so he asked his own teacher mr lee and mr lee was like 
um, you are too young. You don't know. You don't know anything. So tell him that this is, um, this is what we call every precept has its own um, conditions. So timing. Sometimes it needs to be relaxed. Sometimes it needs to be held onto steadfast, held steadfastly, right? Sometimes you need to be relaxed because the, the, the situation calls for it prop, for the right reason. And then, oh, and then there are transgression. Also, there are, how do you say, uh, smaller offenses. Transgression is quite serious. Small offenses is like you didn't fully break the precepts, but you kind of breached the principle, the, breach the point of these precepts trying to do so in this case, um, the fifth precept, alcohol precept, is meant to cover. We call it in Chinese. We call it zhe jie. It's used to protect, prevent uh, us from committing any negative um, acts. You know, things that will cause a negative result on us. Um, those, especially uh, breaking these four precepts, it's very um, unfortunate because you lose the uh, qualification of being a human. If you do not have um, very strong uh, results in holding your five precepts in this life, All right? So that's one thing. Um, yeah, that's it. To be honest, it's all about wisdom, right? And this precepts is all about trying to give you some sort of structures in the life and make sure you don't. Um, run amok like a wild horse and uncontrolled, you know, causing so much trouble uh, to yourself by because of the consequences of your action. So these are all meant to help you to cultivate, you know, um, cultivate sense of responsibility, sense of um, restraint, sense of understanding. Also, um, you don't have to rely on this kind of thing to, to have fun. Like normal people, usually, most cases, uh, uh, social drinking, that's fine. This does not refer to that. You can just have a one glass, two glass, and just understand, you know, there's some situation causing for cheers, you can have it. Um, unless you actually held on to the, the, the alcohol precepts, you know. But normal normally, you don't drink too much. You just drink it for social settings, that's fine. The, the issue here is when you drink too much and then you you know take some drugs in in the process etc. These two come together, right? Alcohol and drugs, um, and that's when problem comes in, right? Because you literally lose your compass if you drink too much or eat something intoxicating. So here you also mentioned that if you treat alcohol drinking as a hobby, a pastime. That is a very huge obstacle to your cultivation as well. All right, it should not be something that you do all the time, um, because it's it's just a matter of time. You get too much alcohol, you get too deep into it. Step one, step two, step three. So it's 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 all about preventive, right? This is our preventations. You're trying to prevent um, this from happening to you, the negative stuff from happening to you. So in the next half of the sentences, Guru uh well, fight with your own family, be, you know, between family members. Um, first of all, what is family, right? Beyond the obvious, parents, children. But family is a group, is a unit. And if this is the basic unit is not peaceful, the world will not be peaceful because it is the foundation founding block of every civilization and every country every society if that founding block is like your blood cells your 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 every part of your body is not healthy and it keeps spreading its um, illness everywhere else it will become cancer and then eventually took the life of the host so same goes for family um quarrel and fight is a sign of um how do i say disharmony that means it's a sign of things happening um Everyone do not see eye to eye. Everyone always trying to find an excuse to, you know, fight each other or they get too caught up in this. So this is this is a problem that it gets even worse as we go because um, 
people pick fight with every single thing you know they deem right or not right based on their own judgment based on their own um own standard right but uh um, yeah and the biggest problem is this will pass on to the next generation because usually this kind of you know argument i'm not saying that we should have a little bit of you know discussion arguments but this is more like literally like fighting to death or rather more like fighting until it becomes something too much something is disruptive and the most disrupted person is the children because they are the result of this family husband and wife or you know, if they want to adopt the kids either way this is under the wo- under the roof uh, and the kids are the one that absorbs everything good and bad so they are the one that will pass on whatever you taught them and if you do quarrel and fighting amongst family members it's just teaching them that you know they can just do whatever uh, they feel like it without even being considerate towards one one another this kind of person is very sad as well because they grew up in this family and they didn't realize what truly is a family, having a family like someone, you know, someone backing you up and, you know, someone you can put your heart to, open your heart to, right? And then something that is very, supposed to be happy, supposed to be, um, supposed to be very um, nice and warm to hearts, to your heart, right? That's the whole point of it, right? When they just marry, when they just in the honeymoon phase, when they have just, just you know, give birth to the children, most parents feel like that. So, so this is very important, right? To understand the harmonious family is the result of a harmonious society because they generated so much, you know, they give so much influence to the, um, yeah, to the children that they will carry on this uh, tradition onwards that's how tradition is they pass on the habits uh, um, well it, it's not like right like there isn't any fight at all in the history of family but um, as soon as human has this you know situation you know have a family the very beginning, there will always be some sort of discussion, some sort of fight, um, but it was not well. It was not like advertised widely um, back in the days. That's what Master Chingong trying to say. People might not, you know, show it out and tell everyone this is bad, this is good. They learn how to see the good side of each other, you know, compromise and all that. Those are very important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Among this topic, the biggest thing we need to think about is patience, is to withstand. Um, yeah, basically to withstand this, you know, pressure on you and able to um, be patient and see things through. This is one of the top qualities one should have in practicing the path. Um, without patience, you can't complete anything else. You won't be able to be persistent. You won't be able to put effort. Uh, in a consistent way that you will generate actual results, right? So patience is so important. No matter how smart you are, how well you meditate, etc., etc., or how you know how popular you are, etc., how powerful you are, patience is number one, right? Um, because it it's it will take over all this. It will prevent you from committing any um, negative karma. It gives you enough time to consider. Uh, what should I do? You know, what's the right, best course of action? What's the best um, course of um, action for this situation? And uh, having um, 
having this uh, quality perfects it. So Buddha sped up his enlightenment because he was very patient. He sped up his enlightenment. He's supposed to be after the Maitreya Buddha. But now he become you know, a Buddha in his own right in this era. It's because he has perfected the patience. Right? I mentioned it last week, Ken, that um, you know, um, sorry, yeah, last weekend about you know how Buddha was being, um, his past life was practicing tolerance, patience. One of the king was very cruel and cut his limb and ears, yet he was not hateful, he was very calm and peace and serene. And you know, um, just when the king thought, uh, I have cut you down and you're dead, he able to bring himself, um, yeah, bring himself back and say, if I have any hatred in my heart, I shall not grow the limb and everything that was lopped off from you. So he did grow his limb back, his arm back. It sounds very miraculous, but there's so many we don't know. We can't just assume, right? So that's it. Um, Buddha was very compassionate, does not give rise, give rise to any hatred, anger, and yeah, that happens, and he becomes Buddha faster because of this. He's able to take all this torture and not thinking, not attaching to his body. So, in my, our time, yeah, um, we need to learn how to get along with each other. You know, learn, learn the limits, learn the boundaries, but also learn how to actually get along with each other. Right? Um, yeah. So this one talks about the society, you know, how the society functions, and and this might be a, like quite contrast with the modern mindset. But once we understand what it means. That that's probably very useful for us, especially if we deal with, you know, relationships, you know, special someone's, and we how to, how do we carry our own promise to each other to the best our to the best of our abilities. This is the quality that one should not have if they want to have a family, happy family, if they want to have a happy relationships, right? So first one as a man being neither loyal or kind. As a woman, being either pliant or gentle. Of course, nowadays we can't. Uh, people would jump up and say, "What pliant and gentle, right?" We we have women's right. We have a uh, woman become a president, the boss and CEO. That's actually not the point of this clause, right? Of course, you can say it's in ancient times, um, and it's 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 you know like it's outdated and so all that. If we only take it from the surface and literate literal understanding and apply forcefully apply our current you know generations mindset on this clause yeah we um, deny ourselves of the opportunity to go to get more from this book right so we should not use this kind of sentiment when we read this sages book because these people came out from their heart uh, when they write they don't think of how to control women or how to control the weaker society and have ultimate uh, political power over them. You know, all these humanities, I came from humanities, they write all these theses and stories. Understandably, right? Because this is society and society always change. But here we're talking about truth. We're talking about more like, rather than truth, we talk about principles. So, in in a larger context, right? Even with, you know, this um, transgender and LGBTQ, I, IQ movement and all that, which, you know, we are getting more diverse and all that. That's a good thing to be diverse. But right now we're talking about majority, right? This is the majority situation. And the majority situation, people still have this male and female getting together. I know it sounds silly if I say that because being part of the society, I also need to acknowledge that. But now I'm talking about this situation where how does a couple operate in a team, right, as a team? How do they how do they operate in this unit? Doesn't matter what kind of couple is this, right? So in Taoism we call it yin yang, right? In 
our world everything operates in duality in you know like everything has to operate in conjunction with one another you know? and friction creates grip I'm, I'm talking about really far like you know gravity and then anti-gravity there's always to and fro you know there's always two so so does human humankind as well how it work you got to have someone to work with you in order to form a team you can't just be by yourself right and in this case we use men and women because this is the most common and most um, how to say it has been like that since time immemorial there's no point denying it like i said do not use modern sentiment and that short sentiment to force backwards you know force it backwards there's no point whatever is progressing so be it this is cause and condition but now i'm talking about this general situation that applies to everyone even different kind of orientations right as long as there's two person working in a team right no matter what kind of team it can be in work it can be in relationship they should have someone they should have this quality right both sides all right um loyal and kind is a necessity to make sure um you know this unit sticks together not feeling disgusted by the action because if you disloyal in chinese we call zanan right this is a very interesting word uh, or someone who likes to you know uh, mess around with other people even though they're in relationship that means very um, playboy or playgirl kind of mindset kind kind is not a is a easy taken for granted language it's not how do you be kind despite all the pressures that put on you all right and it's kind of weakness that's another thing um because traditionally masculinity or being a man that means that you need to be strong right and strong does not deny you of being kind right being strong means you can protect the weak you can be someone who can carry responsibility you can carry out more if we talk about um quality of being strong in 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 terms of character in terms of physical built mostly applies to men mostly and that means this figure you know of being a person who can carry out the mission carry out the responsibility carry out the promise uh despite adverse situation despite challenges is admirable right this quality can happen in any genders right anyone right so for now we just use this as a sign all right for us to understand this so if you're loyal and feel kind that means you're dependable reliable right i talked to many people they still say if they want to find a couple they want of course someone who is loyal and kind how are you going to marry someone or you know being a partner with someone who is not reliable right you won't even do business with these kind of people you won't even work for these kind of people let alone having them sleeping next to you and having you know see their face day to day in and out so that is a number one quality right so man in this case is human as well it applies to either side and of course there are dynamics people if you're being nuanced and being realistic right with all these lingos there are always one in a group people who are likely to take charge not always there are always um special case mostly some people would like to do more of the guiding leading we call them men right? it can be your wife being the man in the house you become the woman in the house as a as a man gender man so I, i'm being very open because buddhism is very fluid right it's not like you fix in this of course we still have to respect the traditional values and all that but close one eyes to this happenings of the world does not help us spreading the truth truth is truth no matter what kind of spectrum you put it so as a person who's more guiding and leading no matter what gender you are you always you know faced with a lot of challenges and temptation because you'll be dealing more on the outside element and the outside element can be very tempting you know, like other more prettier people or handsome partners or more um seduction you know wealth you know 
there's a saying, right? Uh, 什么男人有钱就变坏 ，something like that. Like once you have money, you become bad guy, right? Uh, you become a bit more like a bad boy, something like that. This is also from experience, of course, but it's also、um, a test, right? If you can stay still, because in Ch- ancient Chinese like culture, they also mention, right? Zhao Kang Zi Qi Bu Xia Tang. Why would they especially praise person who do not、um, do not、uh, how to say divorce their wife? You know, back in the days, right? It's, it's It's like that, right? Patriarch society. So they divorce their wife when they have become powerful, and then they went for the more, you know, king's daughter. You know, those powerful family you know, marry the woman in a more powerful family as a way to uprank themselves.、Um, that was common, right? Even nowadays, I would say the same would happen. It's just you know all these news you saw of the. Wealthy people, and that's why we cherish those people who stick with their wife, like Chao Yunfat, right? With with such power, like presence, influence. Chao Yunfat, everyone knows, right? Do you know Chao Yunfat? Zhou Runfa, Zhou Runfa, 不认识啊，那个很出名 So he stick with his wife for fifty, I think almost fifty years. Uh, also maybe Long Chiu Wai, you know, all these Hong Kong stars as well. Ah,、uh, Liu Dehua. You know, Andy Lau, they stick with their wife, right? They stick with their,、um, their partners, right? So a lot of people say, oh yeah, they might not look pretty or anything, but if, if people all after all these years, if all you look is the face, then something's wrong, right? Maybe in the beginning when you play, you know, like like maybe if I'm going in a relationship, oh yeah, maybe look is like ooh ah,、uh, but after like twenty thirty years, it's more like soulmate, right? Like、for you as well, Auntie, right? Soulmate. It's like getting to know each other heart to heart. That one is more long lasting. How can you rely on something that will change so quickly? Especially this, right? This would go. All right. This is just a just a catalyst to get started. Um. So that's one thing. Being loyal and kind is a. It's not a easy word. It 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 needs to earn. Need to earn this title, and you can't be loyal if you're not tested against disloyalty. You're not kind if you're not tested against cruelty. So see, we operate in opposites always. There is always an opposite. Takes two to tango. Otherwise, there's nothing. As a woman, being neither polite nor gentle. So in this case, we should not restrict women as in the woman gender or the woman's.、Uh, In the in the in the sense, but more in the you know people who are more, because someone who who will be more in the leading role, someone who might be more you know gentle and pliant. These are these are pliant and gentle, right? Does not mean that you cannot say no, and you always need to take it whatever it comes. It means you may be more patient. So like Buddha taking taking the humiliation more than just that, taking the torture from King. Karinga, does it make him weak? Is Buddha weak? He can, he has surpassed life and death. Even a nuclear bomb drop into that world will not harm him. He can come back in ten thousand different forms. How can he not be powerful? Even the highest level of heaven are fearing him because they can't touch him. That's why in our current incarnation, the Buddha is being asked by the Mara to. Go into the Nirvana ASAP, because literally, Mara King, which is representing the temptations and all the five desires, that means what our human is always、um, attached and lost our true nature because of.、Uh, he's just a representation of our desire, right? It can be a real thing as well,、um, real person as well. So asking him, can you please go go into Nirvana as soon as possible? So, you know, a lot of people are still enjoying their. Life, you know, pleasures. So I don't need you. Something like that. And of course,、um, it kind of worked. Like he actually supposed to stay until hundred years old, but yeah, he put pull back twenty years. So he he had achieved Nirvana at the age of the seventy nine or eighty. So so that is that is not weak, right? He might be pliant. He's gentle, 
but he's strong. So these are not these are not opposite of each other. These are actually powerful. The most powerful in Chinese there's a saying, Yi ro ke gang. The soft can overcome the strong. Water overcome the stone. So can the stone cut the water? No. Right? The 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 stone is rigid, strong, but it's brittle. It can shatter very easily with enough force. Water, the more force you push down, the more force it bounces back up, like Tai Chi. There's a whole principle of Tai Chi behind it. So pliant and gentle should not be seen as weak. So in this case, I, I do agree with this, gener uh, this new generation uh, saying that you should not define you know, femi femininity as weak and and then we should not put ply and gender as weakness. It's it's called flexibility, ability to bounce back, like bushfire in Australia, right? Ply and gender, it can be used. Those those trees were burned, but they're able to grow back out uh, so quickly, right? If it's too rigid, it should you will not have, be able to grow anything out of it. So, um. So it's very important to be have to be pliant and gentle in the household. If both both couples have these four qualities, this family is beautiful. It's a it's a it's what you want to see in a love story. It's what you watched all the dramas for. Guilty as charge. You you want you want that feeling of you know people really care for each other, really gentle for each other. You know and and they might not represent it very quick very outwardly not everyone do that I don't do that so but it's like you know like maybe your parents you know just get up soup for you or you know taking care of your uh, clothings when you come back you know wash your clothings all this subtle stuff right it's what I call pliant and gentle right when you're very sad when it hurt you know they're just um, sitting there not nagging on you or anything they just being there, ever calm and ever peaceful. Maybe at that very time, you need some help. You, know, you need someone just listening to you, not just saying, this is right, this is wrong. They're just sitting there and just opening, lending an ear to you. you know? And you know that ultimately you have to face the reality. You know that the world is not going to spin around you. But at that moment, you need someone just be pliant for you for that moment. That's what love is, right? And why Bodhisattva and Buddha love is so pure because they apply into every being. In Chinese, we call Heng Shun Zhong Shen. So is Bodhisattva weak? No. Is Buddha weak? No. If he has no fear of death, if no need, no bound by life and death, he's not weak. Even the most powerful empire in the world, like Mon, Genghis Khan or anything, cannot touch Buddha. If he actually appears, why? He's no fear of death. Right? Same. Right? Um, same thing like Jesus, right? He was crucified to the cross, right? The Roman was not happy with his because it's political consideration. In, in summary, he might be killed, right? But he's so very pliant, he's very gentle. And that has invoked the whole society to change over the way they do things. So now they become Christian, right? They become Roman Catholic. This is why it's very powerful to be pliant and gentle. Right? It's hard to be pliant and gentle in face of humiliation, in face of all these problems. It takes a strong mental fortitude, strong confidence in your self to be pliant and gentle. Because to be pliant and gentle it means that you are confident to take a lot of step back. And then, of course, when time is right, you can go back, you know, cause and effect happens, right? It will come back at them. We also can do what we can to prevent harm spread to others, like domestic abuse, right? I'm not saying that, oh, pliant and gentle, get abused. That's that's not what it means, right? I'm trying to just cover all the spot, all the loose ends as, as I can. This is not what it means. Pliant and gentle means that sometimes there are complicated situations that just need to be patient. You need to see the situation first before you act, right? Because the opposite of pliant and gentle is defiant and um, hushed, you know. And and defiant in the right time also 
become a symbol of martyr. It's not wrong. It's not a bad thing. But in, in the family settings, defiance shouldn't be a thing, right? It shouldn't. It shouldn't be too. Why would you need to defy it in your family? Unless the family is not a healthy family, you need to be defiant. If it's such a warm cockles, you know, the one that you. That's why a lot of people don't believe in marriage anymore, don't believe in relationship anymore, don't believe in anything because they thought, oh, I just, you know, if you love me, I love you, that should be fine. No, it's a work. It's a, it's, it's a suicide. It's literally like what, what we're doing now. We're trying to practice better at our work, better at our relationship, better in Buddhism, better in our communication, better in our uh, temple. In relationship, same. You need to be practicing that quality may every time when you're trying to nag maybe pull off and see what he actually did you know what actually talks to him uh and then you can start you know using a wiser way to remind him but mr chai is so good like before master chanter was so good because he's able to touch the hearts of people by standing the heart, not just the action. Every action is dictated by an intention. They are trying to say something. Some people are rude because they, they cannot conf, uh, express themselves properly or they have carried over the past encounter. Right? If people are wise and not take it at us on the surface right, to heart, they will be able to recover from that behavior and quickly go to the heart of the matter. Why is this person angry? Instead of saying, he's angry to me, I'm going to punch him. He's angry to me, I'm going to go back. That's reactionary. That is very passive. So being pliant and gentle gives you that soft landing. If you're gentle and pliant in nature, you understand that, you know, it's, it's the other word is compassion. All right. And then compassion will allow people to soften up, not to not to get all, you know, um, or triggered, or you know, or too, too, too jumpy. They're easy, they're relaxed, and then they're able to open up. What's the problem? And then they, hopefully, will be able to give them a bit of peace, right? And that is true strength, right? Because in this imperfect world, we have always problem coming in from natural. It's also caused by our negative karma, natural disasters, and nothing leaves our agency. We are fully responsible. And also the people, it's most of the time it's the people that makes us angry or people that makes us greed or crave after. So it's always social condition, right? And yeah. So first half is literal translation. Right. Last one is natural order of yin yang that men should display nobility while women should display kindness and patience. If men become treacherous and women mean, bold and vulgar, social order will break down, evil come out, accumulate. It is not wrong. Right? Like I say, we should still respect the traditional value. It's just because the time has changed does not mean it does not work. We still have a very normal structured family, male and female, husband and wife. Those are mainstream for a reason. And the whole goal is to have a society where people are getting better than that previous generation in character, not just material comfort, which we have already achieved, which we still need to get better. But the, the focus point should always be people getting more kinder, wiser, right? Um, and more accommodating. Unfortunately, now we feel more alienated, isolated. The society is getting more, um, it's getting more, it's getting more cold, right? And there's one thing that should bound people together is gratitude. You're really gratitude for people, you're really gratitude for everyone. You know, you, you, you will all naturally display that patience, right? Like if your grandma or your ma is hitting you and say that, you know, Sometimes they are very angry because of their behavior. Like not in the abuse level, but sometimes they just like say a strong word to you and stuff. And they are in the right. Of course you take it with patience, right? 
compared to some rain, strangers coming to you and then scold you. Of course, you would be like, what, what are you talking about? Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, we should, still, we should still understand that you know, what makes people great is their character. And a noble behavior is born out of action, born out of, you know, r- many repetition of patience, kindness, despite tested many times. And even, you know, in the relationship where, because right now, why is the relationship so hard to deal with? Because people do not start to look at the heart. They stick in the face. That's it. They, they dwell on the face, superficial. They don't go in depth. Now, I myself also sometimes get caught up as well. But so we always need to this kind of reminder and say that we should look into the heart of the matter, right? We understand the phase is, is how we look into it, but we also need to look beyond what is on the surface. We need to see how this person actually behavior. Is this a princess syndrome? Gong Zhu Bing. Or prince syndrome? Gong Zhu Bing. Nowadays, if you have this family where the parents are literally just treating their children like a prince and princesses, doesn't sound wrong in, on, the, on the face of it. If they were not taught discipline, if they're not taught, you know, how to be kind towards others, how to be considerate, right? Yes, you can articulate yourself, you can defend yourself, but you also need to be kind and allow other people to speak, to articulate, also help nurture other people as well, nurturing, right? Um, you can be strong in face of challenges. You can be tough in, in face of adversities because there will be challenges thrown at you. There will be people um, doing things to you or something like that. You can be resilient and strong and bounce back. To bounce back, you need to have a very powerful source. It cannot be hatred. It cannot be vengeance. Right? That thing will run out of gas really quickly and it will burn both sides. Right? The only way you can bounce back and get stronger is to be even more kinder, even more compassionate, even more capable. Because of compassion, of kindness, because of gratitude, it makes you work harder. It makes you want to be even better. Right? And people who treat you evilly, you treat them as a result, a product of a failed family, of a failed marriage, a product of a failed education system in the society, of a failed character upbringing. You become, they become pity. Instead of, it becomes a very pity person. Like you, you, you look at them as like, if I'm in that condition, I'll be worse than him or I'll be like him then you become strong because you're unmoved already. It's like a children throwing tantrum, right? Of course, if it's really harming you, trying to get out of the way, no one tells you to be, you know, to take it, right? If you don't have that ability. So, too much disclaimer, right? The point is, loyalty, kindness, uh, you know, pliant and gentle or considerate and gentleness. Those are very... Um, important no matter where you are um, even among men right you cannot be all all tough and laughing like the one that bounds the men or bounds the group of men together is actually considerate right like um, you take care of their heart family when he's out or when he's not available or when he's sick you take care of them those are kindness pliant gen- gentleness those are you, you, you take care of them, you know. You treat them as your family. So this is what bounds people together. And, 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 and this, gen, this quality is what makes society works, you know. Makes a place you want to live in. This is very important. Like men and women. If, if they become treacherous and mean, becomes vulgar, you know, just very hateful, very full of negative energy, keeps oozing that, you know, impatience. See, when I say I already feel it, I already have that problem as well. So you, 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 you feel like, why do you want to be that person? Right? We all work hard to make ourselves look good, to make ourselves look, you know, presentable, to make, you know, even chanting Amitofo, right? We look at the Buddhas, we look at the chanting hall. We're always trying to clean it, make it nice and beautiful. Like the Buddha presents us, pure land in you know, such a beautiful 
manner, orderly manner, and, and peaceful and relaxing manner. Why? Because we want that. We yearn for that. All right? And when we do something opposite of our true nature because of our habit, that habit is not formed when you're young. It was formed in past lives. There's no excuse though. Like, yes, it's very tough. It sticks very close to our behavior and covering up our kind and gentle and loyal nature. So, you know, so be it. We should face it regardless, right? We should not allow ourselves continue to stoop down into that treacherous behavior, into that, you know, conniving, teething kind of mindset. All right? Um, bold. Bold in this context is not brave, courage. Is too much brave, too much courage, or too much selfishness that you do not care about others. It's called reckless. Like too lack of tact. That you just make people hurt every time they hear you. That is not straightforwardness. So always remember, those are balance. Yin yang, right? If too much of everything, either side of the spectrum, you will be a problem. No matter what you're pushing for, you know, whatever quality, whatever ideology, or anything. Too extreme, it will become like cancer, right? Regeneration means life, right? Your body cells keeps renewing, but over regenerative, you regenerate too much of that one body part becomes. I'm not a doctor, of course. Correct me if I'm wrong, but too much of that generation of cells becomes a mutation. The mutation, if if it be too much, it becomes cancer. So everything in balance, all right? To understand the balance, we need to understand what makes things work. You know, what soothes the heart, what writes the heart. Soothes the heart may be misunderstanding as people just praising you. Oh, well, you're good, and like even though you do something wrong, right? No, soothe the um. Right, the heart would be the right word. It makes it f feel right, feel comfortable, but right. Like everything is in order. You can't describe it. It's just, it's just correct, just right, and it's not um, in your face. It's natural. So this is a good why a good family always seem mundane and boring. People say boring, mundane. It's not. It's it's that peacefulness, you know, that sublime, sublime joy that you feel from having a reliable, dependable home. And you slowly develop your own talents, your own, you know, places. You have your own friends and your social circles. They are kind. Your family are, are you know, have its own issues, but they all work together to resolve problems. This kind of family will always generate great people as well. We we'll generate people who are um, able to be calm in facing any situation. Um, so it's very important, right? Yeah, you will come out accumulate. If you treat people like that, of course people will treat you back like that. You know, cause and effect. Um, you expect people to be loyal to you. Expect people to be gentle and kind, even though they're trying to tell you the truth. You should do the same, right? Of course, sometimes it calls, you know, Desperate moment calls for desperate measures. If you're too deep in your indulgence, right? Like too overattached to something, to game, to all sorts of drugs, you know, or drinks, you know, the root awakening. That is also compa compassion. So it's a very flexible thing. It's depending on what kind of situation you're in. People really, the most important is their heart has you. They really take you to their heart. They really want to help you. Right, so you need to do the same for them. Um, open up your heart, your will, uh, in your own way. Right, you can express in many ways. You don't have to be all talky and express. Of course, talk is the basic form, but you can express an action in many ways. People who are bound to receive it, if you do it persistently, they will receive your kindness and, and your, you know, your your um consideration your your thoughts your kind thoughts they will repay in order you know and it's just the right vibe we call it vibe you know just the right environment 
you know, you feel the right kind of um, interaction with them. This is karma. You create the right kind of um, condition for everyone to be in. Because your heart has always been kind and always want to, you know, always want to help one another to achieve their their own peace. And you have to achieve your own peace first. You cannot be like, oh, jumping around and nervous or hooked or closed up, gloomy. You can't be giving people peace if you are not at peace and joy. Right? And this is coming from the inside. I'm not talking about you laugh like a foolish guy. You can. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good as well. It's comedic. You also laugh, uh, cheer people up. But that one is just a tactic. But I'm talking about actual state of being is peaceful and kind because you already have this quality in it. Leave the quality, yeah? So all this will take, take one word from this session is patience. Be patient, see what they have to say, see what they're actually trying to express. Now, understand that if they are, you know, really, really blinded by fame, lust, power, money, you can understand that they are brought up that way, right? This whole world is brought in, bringing them out like that. You don't have to be like that. Um, you don't have to be all over the top. Unless you are there, you have that level, you should work on that level and then you slowly work your way up. Some people, it's nothing wrong with you being, you know, very growth orientated, right? I myself, I like this. But it does not mean you should be all push people aside and squeeze people out so that you can sit on top. If that is the kind of environment you have, of course, you need to prepare for the consequences of being squeezed, being pushed down by other people, being betrayed by other people. That's why I was saying that kind people cannot be king or good people cannot be emperor. So, something like that. Because being an emperor, being a people in charge of the whole organization or maybe they need to be the dark side and the bright side. You know, there's a saying of that, right? Um, but here we should not say that. Right? Not everyone needs to be king. Not everyone needs to be emperor. There's only one out of you know how many multinational company, right? And how many people can sit at the top of the realm? This is all relying on karma, good karma as well. And if you have good karma, if good cultivation, even though you have troubles dealing with these troubles and people, you have help coming to you because you have good karma. You have good fortunes. All right. So to hold an organization together, you still need to rely on virtues. If you're all like, you know, plotty machinations, treacherous, you know, um, trying to, you know, one up another, that kind of mindset, you know, overly competitive to the point where it's becoming toxic. You know, no one is kind to another. Everyone has some ulterior motive. And everyone is stopping everyone. If that is kind of environment that you created or you're in, you can't sustain this relationship. This relationship will eventually become a flashpoint of conflict. It will become even more problems. Between people's argument, between organization is competition, between countries war. And it sounds um, sounds fun, maybe. You know, like, oh, it's exciting and all that. But in the end of the day, um, it's going to hurt both sides, right? The best way is always make sure everyone is understanding their own part as well as the other person's needs and then find a way to work towards it, right? So of or even unfortunate had things happen in conflict, always not going too far. Always pull back. Always think about, you know, once you give the message, send the message, pull back, stop overdoing it. You know, you become too cruel or too, too, you take too much advantage of that, of a situation, it will bounce back to you fiercely, right? So you just need to know where to stop. And um, 
In Buddhism, we should not even think about that. We should all think about, yes, there are cause and effect. There are situations like this that cause for unfortunate measures, you know, competitions and all that. Um, everyone's fighting for their seats, stuff like that. But we always need to go back to cause and effect. Good cause leads to good effect. You see what they encounter and you understand. You you push back and say, not push back, you you trace back and say what kind of cause they have committed. Right? And the highest level of cultivation or the most kindest one can do is to be patient, is to be um is to run wrong, you know, is to be patient, is to give way, right, when you have to. Um, sometimes you can't see results straight away. People might lose their seat, lose their power, lose their family. But if their heart is right, right, their reward comes in a bigger form. You know, some people might not seem to have that reward in their lifetime. They might pass, but their influence has left generations of people benefited from it. You know, the examples of it. All the sages are like that, right? They may not be on the top of the world, you know, of everything. But when they pass, their teachings, their examples lead a lot of people, like a lot of people towards, towards a better outcome. So yes, this is the long way of saying this. Be kind, be loyal, be pliant, be gentle, especially in between men and women, or between husband and wife, between partners, share where the orientation is. You know, when there's two person in one room, dealing with each other, long hours, right? After all the initial heat pass away, pass over, it's all about the qualities, what's beneath, you know, um, what brings these two persons together in any common goal. Um, if they are both very loyal, fiercely loyal, really um, kind people, as in they, they really are not, they are not superficial, they are very, um, put their heart on the sleeves, you know. Sometimes you saw a family where they might be arguing a lot, but in the end of the day, to help washing each other's clothes, to taking care of each other's dinners, like so fun. something like that, you know. Express the 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 way they say it. It does not mean what they what they do, right? Of course, we need to improve that as well. Further, the the saying should be less, you know, hushed, and so that it can be a even better next level relationship, right? But this is already very rare, you know, to have people heart to heart you know very um at ease with each other right without needing to guard against them or trying to check what the others doing with their phone we see all these memes about girlfriend checking boyfriend's phone sim boyfriends like trying to um, see what the girlfriend is doing so those those things are yeah very common um but if it's a like to be honest, I um I think I say all I have to say about this. I and uh, yeah, just um stay, make sure we do our we do right in our own lane and not causing grief for others um or ourselves. We should be able to grow from there. Um, I'll stop here. I think I'll stop here. It's too much. So it's best to think about. Sage's teaching, right? Think about the sage's teachings. Um, they might say the same thing over and over again, but once you go to all this drama, hopefully you don't have to. This is painful. In life, you go back to this teaching, you'll be like, ah, oh, right? All these ups and downs. You still need to go back to your home, you know, your home in your heart, your spiritual home. All these are temporarily stuff. They're all naturally empty. By nature, empty. Sunyata. 
it's not easy to have this realization. Um, and even harder to have this philosophy kick in when you're facing with temptations, facing with problems. If you have that in your mind and helps you through all these temptations or tough times, be, gratitude, be grateful. Be grateful to not just the Buddha, to your, um, your people that help you along the way. Also be grateful of your past effort, yourself. Be grateful of yourself in the past, work hard to to get this teaching in your mind so that now you can receive it better. So work hard so that in future you don't have to suffer again from this um, situations. Work hard so that you have right mind, right understanding when you need it. Right? Especially when you're faced with temptations, faced with a lot of choices, you are very confused. This teaching might, you never know, pop up in your time of need, give you a guideline. After all this turbulence is over, you'll be like, at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. Because this thing, this teaching resonates with my heart and I'm not going to betray my heart, you know, my Buddha nature, Buddha heart, my awakened heart, my true heart, to chase over flowers and bubbles. But live with passion, live with joy, live with kindness, you know. Let the flower blossoms, even though you're withered. When it blossoms, blossom. When, like I talked to my one of my friends today, when you have the stage given to you, you, of course, you have to finish the performance. It's your job. You're supposed to shine right now, shine. When you're supposed to accumulate all this emotion, the growth, maturity, and also thoughts, also, you know, like all this process, all these struggles, all these failures, accumulate them, organize them, and then find out what goes wrong, what works well, get better, you know, refer to the teachings, and then use that as an input, what can I do better according to the teachings. So this is a practical use. You want to make it practical to you. You want to make it really useful. Like in this way, I want to be a man who is loyal and kind. Which part of me is not loyal, is not kind? What conditions, can, what situation will I be more tempted to derail from my path? You know? And in, it depends on your position, depends on your status in relationship, depends on your aspiration, right? You want to be a monk, you want to be a person who is aspired to focus on the Dharma teaching, you, your temptation is even bigger. You uh, cannot do this, can do that. There's a lot of restraint. You must understand why. You must keep drilling. Why am I doing this? Is this what I really want? Right? This is no small deal. You know, you will not be rewarded in worldly. You are, you will, to be honest, now is a better better situation. They, you will be rewarded in material comfort, not material comfort. You can choose temptation to reside in material comfort. But if your drive is not strong enough to push yourself and spread the teachings or do whatever the thing you're good at when you become a monk, then probably don't. Um, probably should think about it really hard. You know, you cannot enjoy offering some 10 directions that means this is what offerings of Buddhism is without really 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 want to do something for them repaying them always remember right one grain of rice offering by 10 directions right? no matter what Buddhist order you're in they are belong to 10 directions they don't belong to that one Buddhist order of course they do yeah, in a nominal way, but the teaching of the Buddha spreads to everyone, right? And it should be everyone, not even in Buddhism, also in other religion. You can, it belongs to other, it belongs to everyone. That's why Master Qigong are donating to the Christian or Islamic missionaries uh, uh, often, because that is the heart of the Buddha. Everyone, no one is excluded, no matter where, what they are, who they are, where they are. Right? 
So drill, drill yourself. Seek. Do not rest until you reach that point. Right? Do not rest until you go to Pure Land. Even in Pure Land, you will be doing even more. You give them better equipment, better tools to to create greater impact. In your real life, say so does Pure Land. No, nothing changed in that regard. It's just the environment is getting better and better and better. That's what we should aspire for. Our mental environment is better and better. Our material condition might come and go. Hopefully, it's better. Um, especially like this relationship as well. Hopefully, you want to get better and better one after another. Uh, or if you're the first time, you want to like meet the right person the first time. Or if you want to be a monk, you want to meet the right organization, uh, right guidance, teachers. It's very so many conditions you know you need to drive yourself first before you saying all oh, these conditions should be should it be here should it be not so now while you can shine shine whenever you are whatever position you're in do your best go through the trouble go through this self-doubt reaffirm yourself after you went back in not everyone has to go through this i'm talking about the case i am in and then you able to stand firm on your ground and say I can go and further I can do better right um, this is the reference from the ancient people this is what they did I apply in my real life day to day I don't want to just copy paste that's not working Elfan do not copy paste he applied to his life the way he did, right? He reflect, he drill himself to perfection, right? Like a singer drill his voice, voice, her voice to perfection. Practice the move again and again and again and again until she or he doesn't have to think about it. The other one doesn't need to think about kindness, doesn't need to think about to be kind, to give yourself out and help people actually, to cut off this pointless thought or wandering thoughts he doesn't think about it he just started very struggling don't know what to do awkward feel reluctant to help people then better he get the more he goes in more reflection he did drill he drill he drill he review he come back I should do this better better and then he asked different stage as well he asked 10,000 good deeds Give me this another ten thousand good deeds, level two, level three, level four in his career. Of course, it sounds like transactional, but cause and effect is transactional. Um, eventually, when he reached to a level where he's already skillful in kind deeds, he he's in the higher level position. You know, minusing the tax helped thousands of people. One deed of good acts becomes. Thousands equates to thousands of good acts. So it becomes easier for him to be good, easier for him to accumulate good karma. This is why richer people get richer, poorer people get poorer. Or this is why Buddha and Bodhisattva can cultivate good merits so easily, even though he's just donating one dollar or something like that, because his heart is pure, right? This is why when we are in this stage of you know, like we are still working our way to this. We always have doubts. We always have this and that, thousands of opinions. Like even after I left this session, I might lose my right understanding. And I feel like, oh, what am I doing? So this is very hard. But what other choice do we have? Think on that way. You need to do this. You need to drill this. You need to get this so to the point of you know, perfection. Like, have that spirit of craftsmanship. Sharpen your sword. You never know which day you need it. And the sword to sever all the afflictions. Right? No matter how tired you are, how unreluctant you are, just push yourself, sharpen it. You can sharpen one, is one time sharper. If you sharpen twice, twice sharper. That means you're easier to cut through all this um, problem when you rise. So do not give up. Don't stop. Right? Keep trying. 
find help, find help, talk, find resources, go to temple, go to somewhere you think can help you. This whole world is in your true nature. If you really have that direction, if a sense of, I want to get out of these extremes, I want to be better and wiser, you will find a way. Everything you do becomes an opportunity to become better and wiser, even though you're just chopping trees, I mean, chopping vegetables or cooking all mundane stuff. Find a way. You will spot, you will pay attention to those spots that improves your environment, improves your current standing, improves your current situation. No one wants to regress, right? Buddhism is not about sitting in the trees, sitting in a cave, facing the wall, and then just meditate. Those are for shows. No, these are also not for shows. Those are methods to attain, um, chant, to, to meditate. But why? Why do they meditate? Right? Because they want to gain enlightenment. Why do they want to gain enlightenment? Because the world is suffering. Why do they have sufferings? Because of the, all the best past karma they created. And they actually feel it strongly. And that drives them to sit in front of the cave and actually sit and say, I want to attain enlightenment. And I don't think all the time, I just do my current job well so that you naturally leads to that part. This is so much different than people saw some really serious practitioners facing the war and it's like, I'm just going to follow him and do this. Nothing's wrong with that as well. That's also good, planting good seeds. Like I say, nothing is absolute right and wrong. In Buddhism, there's no absolute right and absolute wrong. Right? When we say truth, it's not like this is the truth, this is false. It's just, it's just like this is, if it's true, it's inevitable. You will get there. No matter what you do, even you go against the path, you will still have to come back because you will have to suffer all the way down to Abhichi hell and then you will come back up and then you'll be like, oh, I still have to do this again. After eons of generation, I still have to do this again. If I don't escape this practice uh, back then, you know, I heard Dylan saying this, I, if I didn't escape that practice, then I could have been in Pure Land or at least in the better realm, getting better next time. So you can't escape it. If it's truth, you can't escape it. Right? The truth is we all will return back to our true nature. Everyone will become Buddha. Everyone will. Everything will. Right? So, good luck. Yeah. Move forward. Um, and then we'll see you guys when I'm back. Whenever I'm back. We'll talk about this later. Uh, but um, have a good break. I have a good break to myself. Have a good break to you, whoever is watching. Thank you for staying along with this session. I um, I go random, right? I'm a very random person. That's what I was told. Um, but I always have points in there. Don't worry. I don't I don't just blurb out nonsense. I do have points, but um, the way I express it is like that. I will change, but um, I think too formatted, too clean is also a problem. So I hope this is not too much off track. Or if they do, please inform me by any means, you know. Please inform me through Auntie Yen Zi or sending emails. I'll talk to one of the variables, like, what is Dylan talking about this? Eh, who knows? But other than that, may you all be enlightened in your own way. Because enlightenment, there's only one. Ways to get enlightenment so many. We're talking about pure land method, which is the easiest, the quickest. We still have to promote that. It would be incompassionate if you don't promote this easiest way to get there. For me, I myself, our knowledge, I did not practice a lot of chanting. But when I do, it actually helps. So that's something I need to work on. How do I incorporate chanting when I'm losing my thought? Uh, those those progress are more interesting for us, I would say, than telling you what the state of Buddha is in already, because that is like a end goal. For us, it's always constantly moving. We always have to deal with things, especially when you're a layperson. Even the monk nowadays, right? When you see all these, 
venerable chanda venerable wuxing they are busy they have to do things they have to deal with things i'm talking about realities all right i'm not talking about all fancy stuff realities they deal with things they have to do their own homework they have to chant right they have to listen to the dharma master chingon's dharma master chingon himself is busy master lee's his own teacher is busy they are not busy for themselves they're busy for the sentient beings we won't ask you of that but we can ask ourselves to give more time to pursue something beyond just benefiting yourself and all use that mindset of i want to improve myself so that i can improve everyone so i'd like to end this session with one sentence i didn't manage to say last weekend i think this is even better platform because it reaches out to the world take care of yourself for me and i will take care of myself for you so i'll leave it at that right whatever path you pursued truth is there right you observe it from that point of view you able to see how these successful lovable people are still able to be so loving and giving in all fields artist monk politicians teachers while well, politician is a rare breed very rare to have that but um there does not exist that right there will always be sages there um you just can't see it if we don't use the truth to see things so army talk for everyone have a good um have a good life ahead no uh, i just post that have a good life have a good life um so have a have a good life um and we'll we'll we'll, we'll congregate again we will we'll meet again We'll definitely meet again. I will, I'm not going to say when, but we're going to meet again. All right. Thank you so much, Amit Ofo. Let us finish the session with ten times Amit Ofo and dedication of merits. Amit Ofo. Amit Ofo. Amit Ofo. Amit Ofo. A mi to fo 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 May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss amitabha